Okay, for the lesson two practice problems that we have for the first problem is when Han makes chocolate milk, he mixes two cups of milk with three tablespoons of chocolate syrup. Here is a table that shows how to make batches of different sizes. So use the information in the table to complete the statements. Some terms are used more than once. All right, so let's go through these series of questions right here. Um, first question is, we gotta fill in the blanks here. The table shows a proportional relationship between blank and blank. Well, uh, I don't think the order uh, in which we write this matters, so um, I'm just gonna abbreviate this. Uh, looks like cups of milk, I'm just gonna put milk there, and uh, syrup. I could be a little bit more specific there by putting like tablespoons of syrup or cups of milk, but for our purposes, milk and syrup is fine. Um, for B, the scale factor shown is, that's a little bit of a weird question. <clears throat> I think it's referring to uh, right here, you know, this information. And that That's showing a scale factor of 4. So it's times 4. 2 times 4 is 8, you know, and then 3 times 4 is 12. Um, but that doesn't work from here to here. So I think it's just talking about the scale factor amongst these values right there. Okay, that's a little bit of a confusing question. So if you're stuck on that one, that's what it is. Uh, the constant of proportionality for the relationship is, um, now I, I know it doesn't say uh, X or Y, but I mean, it, it doesn't hurt for us to start thinking in these terms, but you know, it's, um, it's good to think of this column as like your x, your inputs, and this is your y, okay? And when you, when you figure out your um, constant of proportionality, um, <clears throat> constant of proportionality is going to equal, it's going to be k equals y over x, or y divided by x. And sometimes it's just written as a ratio. So for c, uh, what we can do is just write... Um, I'm going to take a y value right here. That's a y value, 3. And I'm going to compare that to an x value, 2. And that's improper and all that stuff. You know, it could turn into 1 and 1 half. But the constant proportionality, it's got, we just have to write it as a ratio. So 3 to 2. 3 over 2. Um, you know, if you wrote 1.5, you're not wrong either. All right. Um, the units for the constant proportionality are what what do we got we've got uh, syrup I'm gonna have to kind of abbreviate here I think that's the abbreviation for tablespoons tablespoons of chocolate syrup per cup cups of milk All right, what do we got here? Um, for number two, we've got a certain shade of pink is created by adding three cups of red paint to seven cups of white paint. So A, question A is how many cups of red paint should be added to one cup of white paint? All right, so we're basically trying to figure out this value right here, what goes right there. And uh, what helps us, I know, doesn't seem like a ton of help right now but like this is you know think of this like your x this is your y and just what we do have is we do have a y here and we have an x there which gives us three to seven three to seven and that literally is what it's going to be especially when this value is a one right there like we're looking at the unit rate perhaps uh, but for this one uh, we could just put three to seven three sevenths and uh, what's the constant of proportionality? Guess what? It's also uh, going to be 3 to 7. Question number 3 has a map of a rectangular park has a length of 4 inches and a width of 6 inches. It uses a scale of 1 inch for every 30 miles. So for question A, we've got what is the actual area of the park? Now, just to recap, in case you don't know, you probably do know this, but area 
uh, when it comes to rectangles, uh, parallelograms in general, um, is going to be length times width, right? Length times width. Or sometimes it's referred to as base times height. Okay, so both of those are true. Uh, all right, so what we got here, what I'm going to do is just kind of create a rough sketch of the park. It's a rectangular park uh, that is four by six. Okay, so I'm just going to, this is not going to be perfectly to scale, but the numbers I'm going to put in here should match. All right, so we got four inches right here, and I'm going to put, ooh, that's, I don't want to put four inches there. Ignore that. I'm going to put four inches right here, and I'm going to put six inches here. We got four and six right there. And um, now the scale, the scale tells us that one inch is equivalent to 30 miles. So every inch, so two inches is 30 times two. Three inches is 30 times three. So it's just a basic multiplication, a multiplicative pattern. So just multiply by the number of inches and you'll get how many uh, miles long it is. So, uh, so if we just do four times 30, we're gonna get 120 miles right here. So, so that dimension right there is 120 miles. And then six times 30 is 180. Put that in there. And now we just have to, um, we just have to multiply these. Okay. And if you're not using a calculator, a little hint here, like I like to do, um, I like to leave off the zeros. And I'm just going to multiply 18 times 12. 18 times 12 is that's 16. Carry the uh, one. Uh, one times two plus one is three. Put a zero here. And then we got eight. And then we have one, six, eleven. Carry the one. And we got two. And then um, while I was doing this problem, I ignored two zeros. You know, I ignored the. 0 and 180 and ignored the 0 and 120. So what I'm going to do is tack those back on because those are relevant. So it's 21,600 square miles. That's the area of that park is 21,600 square miles. So that means there's, you know, in that park, there are 21,600 squares, literally. You can draw in if you if you had the patience over 21,000 squares that are one mile long one mile tall you know wide or whatever you want to put it um, in that park so that's quite big all right next up we have be a map <clears throat> the map needs to be reproduced at a different scale so that it has an area of six square inches and can fit in the brochure. At what scale should the map be reproduce, reproduced so that it fits on the brochure? Show your reasoning. Okay, so what we got here is um, it's going to help to draw this out somewhat, and it also it's going to help us to to refer back to the previous problem because we we got an area of twenty one thousand six hundred square miles. All right, so if you have a square, well, it's not a square, it's a rectangle, but if you have a rectangle that is, you know, two by three, that has an area of um, six square inches, right? And that matches the scale here, because half of four is two, and half of six is three. <clears throat> so, um, if we compare, if we compare this area, if we compare this area, six square inches, with the area we got up here, 21,600, um, it might be helpful to see how many times it goes into it. So if we divide, let's say we do 21,600 and divide that by six, all right? You do that, uh, you get 3,600, okay? So 3,600. So what we need to happen is um, is we need each inch, you know, each square inch. I know this is not to scale, but every square inch, 
you know, this is one inch by one inch, but we need that to represent <coughs> 3,600 uh, square miles. So every square inch is going to represent that. Uh, so what that means is um, we need to make each square inch um, 60 miles. Let me zoom in a little better on this. But you need to make this like 60 miles by 60 miles. In, in other words, I'm just saying that every inch on your on this map for this particular problem, every inch is going to have to equal 60 miles. Now I don't know if I answered the question. Uh, what scale should the map be? Yeah, we want to have a scale where one inch represents. 60 miles. Okay. All right, for number four, Noah drew a scaled copy of polygon P and labeled it uh, polygon Q. All right, so this is our scaled version. That's the scaled copy, and it's a new um, polygon. We don't know what, I mean, we, we do, but we don't have a picture of polygon P. All we have is a picture of polygon Q. Uh, following along here, it says if the area of polygon P is five square units, what scale factor did Noah apply to polygon P to create polygon Q? All right, so this is not to scale, but polygon P, um, that area equals five square units. And what's going to help is um, for us to figure out the area of Q. Figure out the Q. So it's really, what I'm just going to do is just kind of break it up. And that section right there is 3 by 6. Right here, if you, if you want to know what I'm doing. This section right here is 3 by 6. You know, that is going to, that's going to be the same as this. That's 3 by 6 as well. So we can kind of kill two birds here. That's 3 by 6, and then 3 times 6 is 18, right? That's 18. So this is 18 square units. So is this. Or we could literally just start counting the, the squares. 1, 2, 3. But um, you know, we're in middle school now. We don't need to do that. We can use what we know about dimensions, you know, length times width. And then uh, we have this one right here, which is 3 by 3. That's three by three, and that makes that makes nine square units. Nine square units. Okay, I'll put u squared for square units. All right, so what do we have now? So we have an area, if we add all that up, we've got 18 uh, plus 18, which is 36, plus another nine is 45. Okay, so the area of this one is 45. So this is pretty easy, right? So it went from you went from 5 to 45. So that's nine times bigger, right? That's nine times bigger. Not quite. Well, I mean, it is. The area is nine times bigger. Uh, but that doesn't tell us the square the scale factor. Remember, scale factor um, is not always going to equal the same thing as like how many times the area. It's not going to be a one-to-one -one relationship. So what we have to think about here is if whatever the scale factor is, whatever the scale factor is, I'm going to put SF here, whatever squared, we, we want that to equal 9. So what number, what I'm trying to think of here, and you guys probably already know it, but what we're trying to think of is what number squared equals 9? What number squared equals 9? And that's going to be 3. So that is the scale factor that we used. So the scale factor that was used from P to Q was 3. Okay? That was a scale factor of 3. Because when it's 3, yeah, all the sides, all the dimensions, like length and width and heights and all that kind of stuff, those are, of course, those are 3 times longer. But the area is 3 squared times bigger. It's very important you remember that. It's the squared relationship, not a 1 to 1. All right, select all the ratios that are equivalent to each other. All right, so we're just looking for equal ratios here. 
So we've got 4 to 7, um, 8 to 15, 16 to 28. All right, so what I kind of see here is we can do, um, I don't know, like this, this particular ratio right here can be simplified. You could divide that by 4, right? You could divide both those numbers by 4. And when you divide those by 4, you get, um, you get 4 to 7. And holy cow, those are the same, aren't they? Actually, I should do this. These are the same, All right? Those are the same right there. Uh, 20 to 35, that can be simplified by 5. You can divide by you can divide both those numbers by 5. So we get 4 to 7. And holy cow, that's the same. Okay? So E is the same as C and A. And then 2 to 3, um, 2 to 3 is already simplified, so that's not the same. And so is 8 to 15. So there's the 3 that are all equal. All right, so we can say, you know, if we write it in fraction form, we could say 4 sevenths equals 16 28ths, which also equals 20 for 35. I know those are totally different numbers, but as a fraction, they're all equivalent. As, and really, when we're talking in this unit, we really want to refer to them as ratios, not necessarily fractions.